In Pisa, 1589, a bright young man wrote a treatise about the center of gravity. His work reached the powerful Florence ruler, the Medici family, which later granted him a position as lecturer at the University of Pisa. This was his starting point of exploring more about gravity and making a well-known experiment later at Pisa Tower. This man is Galileo Galilei. Galileo is not the only scientist that worked on the concept of the center of gravity. Archimedes, who was Galileo's inspiration, already talked about this thousands of years ago. So, what is the center of gravity? Why are these scientists so intrigued by it? Well, before we start the discussion, let's talk about its close relative first, the center of mass. Let's say we have a system whose mass is not distributed equally on each end. When we try to balance the system by applying force on a single point, the system has a tendency to tilt. Either we apply the force near the end with smaller or greater mass. But there is a point on the body that if we apply force on it, then the body will not tilt, thus producing no torque. This point is called the center of mass. As its name suggests, the center of mass emphasizes the mass of the body or system. It is the point that looks as though all the system's mass were concentrated there. Hence, for a uniform object with symmetry, we can simply find its center of mass on its point of symmetry, which is located at the very center of the object. One thing you should remember is that the center of mass may not always lie within the object. If the center of mass emphasizes on the mass, the center of gravity, on the other hand, emphasizes on the weight of the system. Earth attracts an object vertically downward towards its center, and its pull acts on individual elements or atoms on the body. The resultant of all these parallel forces is a single force equal to the weight of the body and acts vertically towards the center of the Earth. This point is called the center of gravity of the body. For a symmetrical object, its gravity center can be found in its geometry. The gravity center of a uniform rod is the point where it is in balance, while for a uniform rectangular and square sheet, the center of gravity is on the diagonal intersection. For asymmetrical objects, we can use plumb line to know its center of gravity. Now, you may feel confused about what the difference between the center of mass and the center of gravity is. The center of mass does not depend on the gravitational field, while the center of gravity does. But thankfully, you don't have to worry much about it. As long as all the elements of the object you're observing are located in a uniform gravitational field, for instance on Earth's surface or near to Earth, the center of mass of that object coincides with its center of gravity. Hence, we can use the term center of mass and center of gravity interchangeably, assuming they refer to the same point. But if the object gets further from Earth, the gravitational field gradually decreases, causing a non-uniform gravitational field and difference in the position of the center of gravity and the center of mass of the object. Knowing the center of gravity is very important to observe a system's equilibrium, especially in construction. Look at the Pisa Tower. As it leans southward, the center of gravity also started shifting. To correct the position of the tower and prevent it from falling, the engineers not only needed to know the soil condition and the tower construction, but also the tower's center of gravity and to keep it on the base. The center of gravity of the tower today doesn't differ much compared to where it was 30 years ago, because the vertical line passing through this center point is always kept within the base to stop the tower from falling over. This is what makes the Pisa Tower among the wonders of the world. What will happen if an object's center of gravity is shifted to an extreme point? In our previous video, we explored the concept of center of gravity CG, finding the position where the object's mass is concentrated and how it affects its stability. Now, let's understand more of it by looking at an air crash investigation. Flight 102 was a cargo flight operated by the National Airlines. On April the 29th, 2013, the Boeing 747 that was loaded with five military armored vehicles took off from Bagram's runway 03 in Afghanistan in the afternoon. It then climbed through 1,200 feet when suddenly its nose rose sharply. The aircraft then stalled and banked right. Just before hitting the ground, the whole aircraft exploded, killing all seven crew members, of which four were pilots, two mechanics, and a loadmaster. So, what caused this dreadful crash? The Aviation Safety Board and authorities, NTSB and ACAA, came to action soon after the crash. Upon examining the crash site, plane's remains, and decoding the black box, they concluded that it was because the cargo was improperly secured, which is why it broke free and rolled off to the back of the cargo hold, shifting a substantial weight to the rear part of the plane. This disturbed the CG of the airplane, causing it to stall shortly after it took off. 
In situations like this, pilots are trained to restore the plane's stability by adjusting the control surfaces in the wings and tail. However, in this particular case, although the plane was theoretically able to increase the lift force at the tail and counter the sudden CG change in under 6 seconds, the loose cargo had disastrously broken and disabled the flight's rear control systems, making it impossible to electrically adjust the rear control surfaces and resulting in the crash. Apart from air transport, vehicle stability is greatly enhanced by evenly distributing the load weight and concentrating the entire mass of the body at the bottom in order to keep the CG as low as possible. A multiple-story bus, for instance, will become more stable if it accommodates more passengers on the lower deck than the upper one. Subscribe to get updates of our upcoming videos, where we'll continue the topic to learn about equilibrium. Thank you for your continuous support, especially our valued patrons and members who have been encouraging us to keep producing more quality content.